of all the dodgy looking console add-ons, the PS3 Move controller must be top of the pile. Originally released in 2010, it was adopted in 2013 for the PS4's PSVR system, meaning some of the batches in these units are 12 to 13 years old. With so many people picking up the original PSVR systems, I thought it'd be a good idea to show you how to change the batches in these right now. Mark fixes stuff. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. You can get an instant quote on a variety of services or browse a library of talented makers designs, add them to your cart and have them delivered directly to your door. Now obviously we don't need to do both of the controllers in this video so we'll just pick this one. This is one of the original models which I picked up for £8 before the PSVR was released. It's a CECH ZCM1E. But the battery should fit all models. I bought this pair of replacement batteries off of Amazon. I've popped a link below. Inside the box you get the two boxed batteries. And inside the white box they're securely wrapped in some bubble wrap. I can't vouch for the DuraPro brand but they've got good reviews and they output the required 3.7 volts. You might also get this fairly awful toolkit with a really rubbish screwdriver and a spudger that you don't actually need for this job. Please don't worry if you don't get the kit. All you need is a 2mm Phillips head screwdriver, otherwise known as a size 00. Whilst we're on the subject of screwdrivers, I've been using this kit lately. In fact, I've done a review that I haven't released yet. I won't go into too much detail because, well, that's for the review. Suffice to say, I'm actually finding it really, really useful. I will pop a link below though. In this tube, it's actually an electric screwdriver in a kind of a pencil format. It's got forward and backwards motion, as you'd expect. But what really amazed me was the wide variety of exotic bits inside the kit. We're just going to need this Phillips head 00 for now, but there's lots of stuff that you can't get in one kit anywhere else. I'm often a bit shy about using electric tools on retro plastic, but this one's got two torque settings. You switch between them by long holding the single button. Easy peasy. What I found most handy is all of the exotic bits in the kit. Alongside the multiple standard bits, you've got things like Y-Wing screwdrivers for Nintendo, pentalobe screws for Macs, and down here the elusive 3.8 and 4.5 mm game bits. Good for Sega and Nintendo. But back to Sony, we need to remove these four screws. This is one of the easiest Sony products ever to take apart. It's literally just these four screws. Although I have to admit it's a bit more fun putting it back together. But isn't that always the way? The shaft on these is quite deep but luckily my screwdriver bit just about makes it. Easy. One thing I do find about the Move controllers is the screws don't really want to drop out, so it's a good idea to remove them and keep them safe. I'm going to use this handy little magnetic mat. Now it's not the most magnetic mat I've ever come across, but the screws do stick. Enough to stop them rolling off the table, but I probably wouldn't start flinging the card around. Let's get that out of the way. To open up the Move controller we need to very gently separate the shell, noting that there are ribbon cables connected inside. Now this blue ribbon cable will need to be disconnected so we can take the back shell off. Then we can change the battery. Just grip it between your fingers and pull on it steadily until you feel it start to come. It should slip out really easily. With the cable removed you can remove the back shell from the front shell and the globe assembly. Now this is the battery, and it connects under here, beneath the vibration motor. It's plugged into a socket that's slightly recessed underneath. 
Luckily in the ES20 toolkit, we've got a pair of angled tweezers. We'll just move these out of the way so you can see the actual plug inside the socket. Using my angled tweezers, I gently lever it out, giving it a wiggle. And there we go, the battery is now disconnected from the move controller. If you look at the plug, you'll see it's keyed. This is important later. By the way, if your end drops off, don't worry. It just slots back in when we do the reassembly. Put it to one side safe for now. Going back to the battery, there's something you need to bear in mind. Now your battery might not come through exactly the same as mine, but some of the modern batteries are slightly smaller than the ones that you find inside the move controller. To stop the original battery rattling around, Sony installed this foam rubber strip around the original cell. We're going to remove this and try this as our first solution for our battery being smaller. But don't worry because if that doesn't work, I have another solution. By the way, it's really nice to see one of Acorn's descendants inside this move controller. Good old British technology. Let's get peeling. Now you need to take it slow because otherwise you'll just rip this to bits, but it should come off in one piece if you take it steady. And there should be enough stickiness left on it so that you can install it back onto your new battery. Oh, easy as she goes. I guess you're not finding this part of the video appealing. Sorry. I'm glad I managed to pull that off. Sorry, not sorry. Please, please, please get rid of your battery in a responsible manner. This means putting it in your local battery recycling bin. Don't throw it into landfill, otherwise it'll poison the water table and turn us all into mutants, not just in Europe. So popping our battery back in, our worst fears are realized. It's rattling around like a pea and a whistle. Luckily, we've got our strip that we rescued earlier. This should solve the problem. Hurrah! And it is sticky enough that we can put it back onto our new battery. Surely that will solve the problem. No. Oh dear. But don't worry, there is a solution. Get a small piece of sponge and pop it here. It can be washing up sponge or anything you can cut with a pair of scissors. I've took a piece off of a DIY sponge. All you've got to do is you take your battery, make sure it's compressed on the end, and pop it in. That will stop your battery moving around. There's no need to pack it in the other direction because that will be gripped by the case itself. It's only when I came to edit this footage that I noticed there's a stray hair running around. But don't worry, it won't get in the way of what we're doing. We're going to take our plug, and we're going to insert it into the slot making sure that the key is in the correct position. Now the key is on the top of the slot, so we want to make sure that our plug goes in the right way. Once again, using our tweezers from the screwdriver set, we push the plug into position, and once it's in position, give it a really solid push so that it clicks home. So that's the battery installed, and you can test by pressing the PlayStation button. If you get a flashing LED, you know that your installation is correct. And why wouldn't it be? To power it back off, simply hold the PlayStation button down for 10 seconds until the LED goes out. Now we can continue to put our move controller back together. Now this part is slightly awkward. If you have a look at the LED assembly, you'll notice that there's a slight key at the bottom. That slots in, but there's also a gap between that and the screw posts on the left and the right. That's because the ball or globe assembly needs to go in first. So put your LED assembly in, making sure that its screw mounts are on the top, then slide it down into the keyed slot. It might take a couple of attempts to get it to go in, but as long as you know how it's meant to fit, you should be able to do it. Make sure that your new battery's wires are out the way of the screw hole. And then grab your back shell holding the flat folded cable and put it back into the slot like so. 
If everything's assembled correctly, you'll be able to just push the back shell back on. Take a second to make sure that your shell is completely closed right up and down the left and right hand side of the controller. And if you're happy that the case is back together, then you can put your four screws back in. As with all reassembly, I recommend turning the screw slightly clockwise until the screw drops into the existing thread of the case. This will avoid you cutting a new thread and weakening the screw posts. As a final check, just make sure that you can click the buttons on the side of the controller. That means they haven't got trapped. Perfect. There is one caveat with the move controllers, and I've found this on a few models. Not all mini USB cables are created equal. In fact, I've found a few that won't charge the controller at all. So just bear that in mind. Well, we're done. I hope you found this useful. Let me know what you think of the video in the comments section below. I'm going to give these to my child so they can go and play Beat Saber now. Happy days. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to help me produce more work like this, well, perhaps you'd consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash stuff. You'll get your name on the end of my videos like all these amazing people on the screen right now. But that's not all. You'll get ad-free early access to all my videos, access to the exclusive patron Discord channel, as well as access to exclusive videos that are for patron eyes only from behind the scenes. And who doesn't want to see behind the scenes? Well, maybe you don't want to see behind the scenes, but that's fine. You don't have to watch them. Thank you so much for watching, and seeing as you've got this far, maybe you'd like to watch some of these other videos. Go on, click one. I'll see you there.